Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to GB Gaming. Today I want to do a very quick tutorial with you which might make your lives a little bit easier. Uh, what I'm going to show you is something called, uh, well, Sins Mod Manager version 1.1. Uh, pretty simple title, uh, very catchy and it does exactly what it says on the tin. Uh, this is a, let's just get it up, this is is a um, a wonderful little application that uh, Zombie Rus Five has made. He is the developer of Sins of the Fallen and Fall of the Cobol. Fall of the Cobol, yes, indeed, Fall of Cobol. And uh, he's made uh, this particular application that you can see here. Now, what this allows you to do is to uh, change your mods on the fly by opening the application, uh, generating the enable mods.txt, and then going into the game. And uh, we will be showing you that in just a moment or two. Um, it's quite easy to set up and it's also got some quite useful little features which I'll show you now. Uh, now just as a very very brief install tutorial it's extremely simple. Uh, well the first thing you want to do is you'll want to download it. Uh, so we can just go to files uh, and of course there it is Sins Mod Manager version 1. Download it, it'll probably go into your download folder, pretty simple so far, I'm sure. The link's going to be in the description below if any of you want to make use of this. And let's take a look in our downloads, well here it is. Uh, when you open it up, you will be faced with three different files. Uh, you can use WinRAR or, or WinZip if you choose to, I always use 7-Zip because it's the application that I have for unzipping files. This is the only bit that you need. Now if you extract it, we're going to extract it to the download folder uh, just for argument's sake. Uh, there it is, the application is done. I've already got one on my desktop, so I'll, I'll just get rid of that. Uh, you can move this to wherever you want. I like to have it on my desktop because I find it quite useful there. Now, when I double click on it, it opens it up. Which is, again, as I say, extremely simple, very, very useful. Now, what does all of this do? Uh, let's just take a little example. Now, I have over here, Mods Rebellion 1.85. Um, I have my enable mods.txt here. Uh, we can open that up using Notepad. And you can see that right now I've got uh, Sins of a Galactic Empire activated. Uh, so let's think, okay, I would like to change what I'm playing. Uh, and we'll, we'll use Star Trek Armada 3 uh, Final Frontier as a, um, as a thing uh, that we want to change to. So there's a little cog there. So if we do that, it'll tell us that uh, it's been generated successfully, which is good news, uh, and it tells us the file name. We can click OK and then say yes, that's what I want to play by clicking on the middle button after pressing on the little cog. And it says enable mods.txt has been updated. Let's see what it looks like now. Uh, by going into here and taking a look at our enable mods.txt. Oh! There it is, and it appears to be correct. But the proof is, of course, in the pudding, so let's click play. It'll take a moment or two. Now, I am rendering a video at the same time as doing this, so it might not want to play pull as quickly as it usually does, but fingers crossed it's not going to take more than a minute or so to load up. Yes, indeed, it looks like it's going to work. As you can see on the screen, it has the Star Trek Armada 3 splash screen. And, fingers crossed, it's going to load in in just a moment. I've got this in windowed mode so you can all see what's happening, by the way. So, uh, that's, why the, uh, that's why the game itself is at a bit of a jaunty angle. Makes life a little bit easier when you're recording videos of this nature. Sometimes the screen doesn't get shown. Come on, you silly game. Oh, it doesn't like this. The CPU is all being used up by the video that I'm rendering. But there we are, finally. And... Once it loads into the menu, we can see that Star Trek Armada 3 is indeed active. That's fantastic stuff. Let's exit the game and we'll try something else. Let's think about Star Wars Interregnum. We click that. It hasn't found it at the moment, but it wants to know what add-ons that we have. So we can either generate it for E4X, which is a standalone mod, or Interregnum, which includes E4X. These are all the common mini mods that you may have downloaded. Now, I don't want any of these, so I'm not going to click on any of them. Let's go OK. Generated successfully. There it is. Star Wars Interregnum Alpha 3.3 and Enhanced 4X 1.82. Then we click on it saying that's the one that we want. And we'll click on play again. And of course play because we've got that new menu. Now that looks 
quite useful, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? As you can imagine, this saves you a lot of time if you know what mod you want to play before you're opening the game. There are a couple of other ways that you can you can start your mod. Uh, you can, of course, uh, start your mod by changing the enable, enable mods.txt manually, uh, which requires you to know the file paths. And you can also, with some mods, you can change it by going to options, mods, and then changing it in this section. But that is historically not very good. Uh, sometimes it crashes the game, sometimes it causes long-term freezes. So a, a lot of people who change Sins mods on a regular basis, they tend to ignore this one that's uh, in the actual uh, game itself. But there we go. Uh, the proof was in the pudding there, and it has worked. It's changed over the mods for us. But... Uh, just as a wild example, now Maelstrom isn't something I currently have installed, so if I was thinking, oh, Maelstrom looks good, this is one of the very popular mods. This, of course, as you can see, contains all the uh, the most popular mods for Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. Uh, there's the stock game, uh, Armada 3, Ascendancy, Sins of a Galactic Empire, E4X with Interregnum. Uh, they are uh, synonymous with one another. Sins of the Prophets, this Stars mod, Sins of the Fallen, Fall of Cobol, Maelstrom, Dawn of the Reapers, Sacrifice of Angels 2, and Distant Stars. So, these are the most popular mods uh, that you're likely to find for Sins of a Solar Empire Rebellion. So, if I wanted to download Maelstrom, I can click on the little wrench icon, and it's going to take us directly to the correct page, so we can read about it and download it. Uh, now, as it happens, I downloaded Maelstrom earlier, and here it is, as you can see, in my, uh, my downloads folder. But another useful aspect of this uh, particular application is there is a little button down here called Install Mod. So let's do a bit of that. Um, there it is, Maelstrom Rebellion. Click Open. And it's saying uh, it's installing to this particular folder, which is the correct folder as it happens. So we'll click Yes. It's having a think about it. It's probably going to take a minute or two because it's got to unpack. So we'll just sit here, watch that happen. Now you can see that it's using 7-zip. Uh, now I believe you have to have 7-zip installed to make this work, which is why the Sins Mod Manager had the 7 bits, uh, the seven zip applications um, in order for this particular aspect to work. I think it's worth it because this is actually very convenient. Uh, once that is done for Maelstrom, you can then of course press your cog. It says generated successfully. There we go. And then let's press play and fingers crossed this is all going to work perfectly. We've downloaded the mod um, using the help of the application to find the correct file. We have installed the mod uh, using the application in order to place it in the correct place. And we've changed the enable mods.txt using the application. Let's see if it's worked. Now I'm not sure if it's worked yet because it's been a long time since I've played Maelstrom. So it's just to go a tiny map. It doesn't look like it has this time, sadly. Uh, let's take a look and see if something's gone wrong, because that's going to allow me to see if there are any issues with the game at the moment. So, let's take a look. There's Ma Maelstrom Rebellion R12, uh, which is the thing. Uh, let's take a look at our enable mods.txt. Oh, it's been modified. Ah, there we go. So there is a slight problem that you may run into. If the mod has been updated more recently uh, than the application itself, you might run into a little bit of trouble here. Now, there are certain things that you can do in order to mitigate that, like just as an example, if I take this, uh, have I, yes, I've exited since. So if I take Maelstrom Rebellion R10 dash expansion, uh, I find my current folder, which is called R12 and I rename it, and save, save that. Then what will likely happen if I say I want to play Maelstrom, yes, uh, press play and play again. It's likely to play Maelstrom now because it looks for it. There it is, Maelstrom. It looks for a particular file path. So if your mods do get updated and it changes the name of the folder, then it may cause problems. I'll actually, I'll note that to Zombie Rust because you can always produce an updated version. I'll also question if there's a way that we can update it ourselves, but uh, do you know what? I don't think I've ever actually done a mod spotlight on Maelstrom. I should probably do that. I think that would be, uh, I think that would be quite useful because uh, uh, I think there's quite a lot of races that you can play as in Maelstrom. Let's take a look. 
Oh god, look at them all. So, uh, you can play as the Pirate Loyalists, Pirate Rebels, uh, Norlamins, Alliance, uh, Replicators. Ooh. Yeah, uh, we will take a look at that in the future, but uh, that's not going to be today. So, that is uh, the Little Sins Mod Manager. Uh, very, very quick tutorial on how to install it and how to, to make use of it. Uh, the mods that I do know that work correctly are Armada 3, Ascendancy, E4X and Interregnum, Sins of the Prophets, uh, Dawn of the Reapers, uh, Sins of the Fallen and Fall of Kobol both work correctly, Sacrifice of Angels 2 works correctly. Um, I haven't tried Stars or Distant Stars, I do apologise to the mod creators for not having tried them yet, but it's something that I will do, I expect they work. I know that the file path of Maelstrom has changed, and I know that the file path of Sins of a Galactic Empire has changed recently. So it may be that we need a new version of the Sins Mod Manager in order to uh, in order to ensure that the file paths are correct. But nonetheless, in spite of those uh, two slight deficiencies there, it's a really useful application. Uh, I will have the link in the description below, and I do suggest that you try it out and see if it saves you a bit of time and effort when looking for downloading and installing mods. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video.